Hey everybody, Jason from Meghead Studios. I hope you're having a good day. So this is the third installment of my Red Squadron X-Wing Fighter build. This is the Bandai model. Um, so what you can see, it looks like I've done quite a bit. I actually haven't. This kit is really quick to build and very, you know, really easy to assemble. So what I'm going to go over is some of the issues I had and just what I've done so far. And like I said, this kit, it looks like I've done a lot. It really isn't a lot. So if this is your first time building a kit like this, do not be intimidated. This is super, super easy to build. Um, but let me go over it real quick. Okay, so basically, this is section one. As you can see here, the first section is one set of the wings. The second section is the other set of the wings. They're identical. For the most part, they are identical. Okay, so basically, the f and this is pretty much trial and error. Um, first thing I did was apply the decals, which I've chipped up. That's the yellow and the reds right there. Okay, upper and lower parts. I've chipped up to give it some battle damage. Um, very little painting. This right here. And the exhaust ports, I did paint. I'll go over the paints here in a moment. And all this is just a wash, a panel line wash. Okay. So just to give you a comparison without any paint and decals, this is the lower section. This is part two on the instruction manual. This is all just panel washed. Okay. And yeah, it's, it's fairly, fairly easy to do. Now, one thing I want you to remember is... This paint, the white that's on there, it's just the primer. Two coats of white primer. This panel wash that I'm using absolutely does wonders. It gives it that nice, dirty look. Now, on the camera, it looks black. It's not really black. And again, I'll go over it a little bit more here in just a second. So, let me tell you about some of the issues I had. And they're not really big issues. They're tiny, small things that hopefully this video will help you avoid. Okay, so let me find that on the instruction sheet. So this is part one. Again, this almost identical. This piece here, this is basically your air intake portion of the engines. This is a very, very thin piece. Now what it does, it attaches to this part of the engine and then the front cowling of the engine. Very thin. Um, the first one I did, it didn't quite snap in correctly. More than likely due to the amount of primer that's on there, made it a little bit thick. Um, so this part did snap. It snapped right in half. Um, now, fortunately, and I think, is it this one? Or is it on this one? No, it's, it's on this one. You can barely see that crack in there. Okay, so it wasn't a big deal, real easy to fix, just a little bit of super glue. Um, I used Gorilla Glue, and it fit in there seamlessly. And I think, you know, it also adds a little bit of character to it, because the wonderful thing about Star Wars, especially during the Rebellion era, the Rebels, their ships aren't clean, they're not tidy. They're messed up, and they pretty much use whatever they have to use. I mean... You know, it's pretty common knowledge. You see the Empire with their bright and shiny and clean starfighters. And the Rebels, there's rust, there's dirt, there's everything like that. Okay, so that was one issue. Um, the other issue, these exhaust ports on the engines, some of them, two of them are really loose. Like this one here. So again, not a big deal, not a major break. But you might want to go ahead and glue that in since it's not coming apart. Also, one of these engine ports, this one here, is very loose. Again, not a big deal. I can take this apart and glue it if I wanted to, but it stays in place, so it's not a big deal. It's an easy, easy, easy fix. Okay, so like I said, I'll talk about the paints here. So this gray that I have, I'm using Vallejo Game Color uh, Wolf Gray. It's a really nice, subtle gray. Um, almost, 
I dare to say it's almost a metallic look to it somewhat. It's very easy to say that it's a replaced uh, portion of a, a replaced panel on your X-Wing. And, you know, it's been through a couple battles, so it's kind of dirty. All right. Get to the panel wash in a second. So, of course, Vallejo Game Color Black. Just your standard black. The only black I used was inside of the engines themselves um, to give it a nice soot type look because, you know, they're blowing stuff up in space and in the air. So, of course, there's going to be some dirt and smoke going through these engines. And that's all I did. Just a real quick dry brush to make it look dirty. Not really precise because, we you know, dirt doesn't really go in a precise location or anything like that. So yeah, that's what I did there. I really wish my camera would pick it up a little bit better because it's not all black. And as you can see also, the intakes, I use that same gray, but they look a little bit dirty. So for the panel line, and I think I'm gonna stick with this for pretty much all my builds now, anything deals with white, is this uh, Mig Jimenez, ammo by Mig Jimenez, um, sky gray panel line wash. This stuff is amazing. Um, pretty much that's how I did all the panel lining. Um, I used the, the capillary action. You know, just dip it in and put it on the line and it just fills it up. Um, I did a little bit of dirty wash on the engines, as you can see. And I also did it on the air intakes. And it comes out gorgeously. Um, so what I would suggest Again, learn from my mistakes. Do your panel line first before applying the decals. Because as you can see, you know, sometimes it doesn't quite catch up underneath the decal. And some of these decals, they don't adhere quite well, like you can see on this yellow part right there. So when I applied the line, it kind of went underneath and made it come up. Hopefully this will be fixed once I put the matte finish on there. Now, you're supposed to apply your decals before applying the cannons. As you can see, these cannons do come off rather easily. This one, in fact, actually broke. I don't know why it broke. But again, it's not a big deal. I still have two of the pegs in there, so I can just snap it in and glue it. Boom. Done. But I'll be applying the uh, decals first before I do so. Because this one in particular, and I'll show you on the decal sheet, here, that is this. This part goes right in here, right on this. So it's supposed to line up against this. Um, another thing I've noticed with the decals, if you're trying to go for super screen accurate, they do not fold over like they should right along there. This part is actually supposed to go all the way down. Um, but again, this is Star Wars. Who's to say that the Rebels just ran out of paint or, you know, whatever. And another thing, I saw another gentleman post up. He was painting his uh, stripes right here. And these stripes are these right here. Um, basically like squadron leader um, position, so on and so forth. How many kills you have. Not really how many kills you have. I guess how many sorties. Um, that part of Star Wars, I really don't know a lot about, unfortunately, and I really love Star Wars. Um, but anyway, more to the point. He painted on some more stripes, and the color didn't match up. Is that a big deal? No. Why? It's the Rebellion. They don't have funds to do everything exactly like it is fresh out of the factory. So if it's a different color, hey, Rebels just didn't have the color on hand. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Now, the next stage I'm going to be doing before I assemble this, because this is really a quick assemble. This slides into here. Well, this slides into here, and it's a nice tight fit. I'm going to do a little bit more wash on it to make it dirty. Um, then it's onto the fuselage, which should be an interesting part of the build. Because I've already, and I'll show you here in just a moment, be stage three. I've already gone ahead and done some pre painting. While they're still on the sprue. Now that portion, and it's over here also. 
This is the part right in front of where the uh, astromech unit pops in. Now on all the models I've seen from Lucasfilm, be it from the original Star Wars New Hope or from Rogue One, this part seems to have more of a sepia uh, patina to it than actual dirt. I'm not really sure why. My best guess would be because of where it's located in the fuselage. That's where a lot of the engine and hyperdrive is. So it heats up quite a bit. So it's got more of a burned look than a black look to it. I'll be doing a black wash on it. Actually, no, I'm going to actually use that sky gray because that sky gray is very nice, subtle. But when it builds up, it does give it dirt soot type look. So that's going to be, you know, an interesting part. Um, I already did the nose cone, obviously. Um, and yeah, just some random panels again with the gray. And I already did, as you can see, some pre. Went ahead and did the panel lines early. And this one just needs a little bit of touch up on the gray. Not too much, not a big deal. Yeah, the panel lines are actually really nice, really clean. Um, I, I absolutely adore this kit. And there's some more uh, wash on it real quick because that part seems to get really dirty. That's where your hyperdrive is located. Um, just to give you an idea of how quick the sprues are, your wings come off of panel B. And as you can see, most of that is empty. There's some parts left on there. Now you have two identical C, uh, C frames. And you can see most of it's gone. Most of it is done. Um, so yeah, this can be a very, very quick model to build. Highly recommend it. It's well worth it. And I'm fairly certain the regular A New Hope X-Wing is identical in the build. I mean, I don't see why it would be different because Rogue One is just a couple minutes before A New Hope. So yeah, so you have two of these that are identical, um, which means you have two astromech heads, two of the R2 astromech heads. Um, I believe, and let me double check. So yeah, two of the R2s, and I believe you only have one R4 astromech head. Um, forgive me. I'm trying to I'm trying to find it, and I know I have it. I know it's here somewhere. Oh, apparently I don't have one. I could have sworn I had two R4s. I know there's an R4 on here somewhere. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. But anyway. So yeah, that's it. It's just basically three colors I've used so far. And you got these results. And from the few people who have seen these parts, um, they're like, wow, you did a lot of work. No, not really. <laughs> but I appreciate it. And yeah. So this should be a really quick kit to do, unfortunately. Oh, not unfortunately. I have a family. I have to take care of the family. So... It's taken me more time than I care to have taken on it, but it's coming along. So, oh, yeah, here it is on your B frame. You only get one R4 head, one R4 dome. Um, I probably will go with the R4. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. Depends how much of a pain in the butt it is to uh, paint this up. Because the decal is uh, not really great for the astromech units. So yeah, I hope you liked it. Um, hopefully later in the day I'll be able to post up another video. Oh, and if you're wondering, um, this, why is this exposed with the two holes? That's where another cowling goes for your engine. Um, this is so if you want the option to put your landing gear on it, you know, you can pop it in, pop it out. I am going to just leave the landing gear off. I want this thing displayed with the S-foils and attack position. Because it's Star Wars, man. Come on. All right. Well, hope everybody, hope you have a good day. And have a good one. Take it easy, guys.